Can you explain what being, well, we don't need to explain that because Papa just did. Sorry. Yeah. Here's a good one for you. Having been divorced, what kept you hopeful finding love again? Mm. Well, God let me know that he wanted me, he had a husband for me. Mm -hmm. um, it really made sense to me too. Uh, a lot of people may or may not know my testimony, but even before I was even as a teenager, I was married twice. So my parents had arranged a situation and and um, I went through a rape and there's like, oh, let's shove that underneath the you know, rug and let's put you with somebody real quick. And um, then I, I got, so I got married twice before I was even 20 years old, you know? Right. And so um, then I was divorced at 20, at 25, you know? And at 25, I was like, let me um, wait to, I'm gonna do, do it right. No sex for marriage. I'm gonna do all these things right. So I didn't know um, what I was, I didn't know that I would then wait and do everything right and still then end up divorced again, mm. you know? Mm. And the kids had to get here. Like, I, I mean, Solomon had a situation where he said it was of the Lord and there was divorce. Mm. And so was a woman that was married five times. She was used of God. So once I got over that part and the guilt, the condemnation, the shame of it, mm. of being married and divorced five times, mm. I was like, oh my goodness. And here comes Prophet Passion with like, God, the reason why you were divorced, you tried three times in California, you failed because God is trying to connect you with the right person. He was pulling you out of those situations. Wow. Good. And so when I understood it was the Lord, I understood this was purpose. God has something for me and my husband to do. He's gone through great lengths. I've had a heartache and trouble and tried to make things work. And by the time I was, he's had to convince it, convince me, like Lord had to convince me with lots of dreams and lots of words. Because by that time I was like, I'm good. I don't need to be married. I'm fine. No, no, thank you. I'm good. Mm -hmm. So, but when it came down to purpose, God let me know, this is what I have for you to do with someone. And there's something you guys can do together. And I've ordained this. And so I had to remove my things out the way. And that's when I realized, wow, I don't think I've ever been married before. Mm -hmm. Even all those times I was married, but never married. Wow. Right. So that's I'm good. married and I know what it is to be in a relationship that's purpose driven. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. That's really good. We don't talk about a lot of times when we have these panels, we don't get to talk about divorce enough. Although Todd and I also have been divorced before. And so you said something very interesting when I was married with my son's father, I didn't know how to be a wife. Yeah. And I think, well, I know we were just, we were two kids trying to raise a kid. So our thing was, okay, well, let's get married. Let's, and we thought that would fix our situation. And so we had no purpose. We didn't know, we didn't have a clear vision of what life was supposed to be. We didn't go to God and say, what is our purpose? What is our vision? What do you want us to carry out? And although, you know, God has blessed us with an amazing son. Um, I think when I when I when I went through my divorce, I, I remember going into prayer saying, God, I know that you created me to be a wife. I know that I'm a mother. I know. But I need you to teach me so that when I am so that when you put me back into a relationship, you can show me how I'm supposed to carry out a purpose and a vision. So I knew that what was what kept me hopeful was honestly knowing that there was a greater purpose for my life to create legacy and generational wealth with a purpose partner. And I knew that what I learned in my first marriage wasn't a mistake, but it was an opportunity for me to get things right the second time. Amen. That's good. So I, I love that you are sharing this panel with us and we can talk about divorce because it's so important that you have the knowledge and the wisdom when it comes to divorce before you step into a marriage. Because like Papa said, you want to not have expectations, but you want to prepare yourself for the things that may have happened that may can happen so that you can so that you can avoid those mistakes. Right. Amen. 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 I have a question for Bishop and Jay, because you guys um, have both done time before. So my question is, what was the process like? Because for any man, you have to learn how to become a husband or prepare yourself to become a husband. What was the process like 
after you got out to give yourself the tools to make yourself a version of a husband so that a wife, so that once you were able to find your wife, you were able to lead? Bishop wants to give the alley <laughs> Uh First, let me say, uh, I want to give honor to God. Yes. And Amen. I want to give honor to the man of the house, Prophet Amen. Lovey. Amen. I got to say this. I got to kind of ignore the question for one second. I got to say this. My spirit is so full. Mm. And uh, I don't know what this connection is that Papa Lowe and I have. Because mm. privately, we've never really talked, talked, little Instagram DMs and all that. And he always, it's just something here. Mm. But what God shared with me while, we, while he was here on the panel is that uh, Revelation uh, Church LA will be our new spiritual home. For my Amen. 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 There is something very, very special, very, very full. I, don't, I, I can't even explain it. I, I don't know what sits on his spirit, but it, there is something very heavy. Uh, my wife has even told me privately that she said, uh, you know, he's, he's Papa and a spiritual father, but she said, some, some way he's a spiritual brother to you. There's so many things that he said that I walk and speak in a parallel way all the way from the East Coast in Atlanta that we talk and walk and just, Amen. it's some spiritual alignment that's very, very heavy. So I just, I just needed, my, my spirit needed to, well, it was told to say that. Amen. Uh, and, I, and I honor you all, um, Todd and Lena, as uh, brothers and sisters to us, and thank you for the invite here, and uh, we are just happy to be here. Thank you. We're honored to have you. Yes. Um, I was a three-time felon by 21 years old mm. and served two and a half years in prison. And didn't leave the streets till 25 years old. I'm now 42. And around 2007, 8, 9, uh, I got married mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. I eloped. And the woman I married was a, more of a godly woman than I was at the time. Mm -hmm. I forced that marriage because coming out of the streets, being successful in real estate, uh, I don't know what they, they thought. They thought I was either laundering money. I don't, I don't know what they thought. But, but, but the people, <laughs> the boys were, uh, I was getting all kind of investigations and all kind of things like that. And so I felt like I wasn't going to be around. And so I, I forced a marriage to have someone to cover me in case I went away again. Because I had the trauma of going away and knowing that somebody got to answer the phone and somebody got to send commissary. Um, so, <laughs> right, <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> Oh, uh, I didn't get married again. We got, we got divorced in 10 months. I didn't go away. Mm. Uh, my life changed and all kinds of things happened. And fast forward uh, maybe 10 plus years, mm. 12 years, and I, I married Ernestine four years ago. Mm. Uh, but what I learned from that situation was being very genuine about the person I choose as a partner with no ulterior motives. Mm. Amen. And literally aligning with someone that uh, when she met in my office, we met as uh, business associates. I was starting our real estate fund. I explained to her, she had, you know, she had just bought a real estate property, her first investment property, but she was more so a concierge for A-listers and NFL players. But she said, I want to introduce some of my clientele to you, and I want to help you build a black Wall Street. Mm. And help, yes, me. Help, help me. Help yeah. me. My goal, right? Yeah. And so that was as, a, as an associate, but where it got deeper was I'm into nation building. I'm into serving those least amongst us, right? And outside of our skin color and ethnicity, black people in America are the least amongst us. Mm -hmm. And so like Christ, I, I serve the least amongst us. My wife and I talked about how do we build a, a stronger black community. So I was always the bull out thinking big, liberation, self-determination, right? And, and all that. And she was saying, we can't build a strong black nation until we build a strong black community. Mm -hmm. And we can't build strong black communities until we build strong black families. Mm -hmm. And we can't build strong black families until we repair the relationship between the black man and the black woman. Mm -hmm. And so that was where our purpose aligned. That's good. But being genuine in that, yeah. and, and, and respecting the relationship, and being genuine to my, my own calling and obedience and submission to God, allowed me to go into this marriage with very, very, very pure intentions. Mm -hmm. good. And, and that, that's what I got from my, my, my time in, uh, you know, in prison and, and transforming myself into the man that I am today. But, but that was my experience from, from going from, uh, you know, from that life into this new life. That's good. That's good. That's really 